In this video, I wanted to provide an example of how it is possible for a random variable xn to tend in probability to a random variable x. And for this particular case, I'm going to use a random variable x, which is a discrete random variable, which takes on one of two values. It takes on a value of 0 with a probability equal to a half, and it takes on a value of 1 with a probability equal to a half. So you can kind of think about this as sort of heads or tails. And then we're going to form our sort of xn as being equal to 1 plus 1 over n times our random variable x. And I know I sort of alluded to at the end of the video, at the end of the last video rather, that xn tends in probability to a random variable x because this sort of second term here on the right hand side is going to disappear as n tends to infinity. But actually, we kind of need to be a little bit um, more stringent in the way we actually demonstrate that. So that's what this video is going to be about. OK, so first of all, let's just write out what it actually means for a random variable to tend in probability to another random variable. So we have that xn tends in probability to x if it is the case that the probability that xn differs from x by a positive amount e is equal to 0 for all sort of positive e. So first of all, in order to demonstrate this, we actually need to derive this quantity xn minus x. Well, that's quite easy to do given our xn here. If we just take over um, one of the x's, we just get that xn minus x is equal to 1 over n times x. And moreover, because our random variable x we've chosen to be positive, we know that the modulus of xn minus x has got to be equal to 1 over n times x. OK, now we need to think about the, each of the separate cases. So with probability equal to a half, we have that x is equal to 0. In this particular circumstance, we have that xn minus x is equal to 1 over n times x. Well, x is just 0, so we have that this is equal to 0. So quite trivially, in this particular circumstance, we have that the probability that xn minus x is greater than some amount minus eta has got to be equal to zero because we know that this amount in the brackets here is actually equal to zero, this sort of first term here. Okay, how about the second circumstance? We have with probability equal to a half that x is equal to one. In this circumstance, we have that xn minus x is equal to one over n. So we can sort of now work out the probability. We have that the probability that xn minus x, all absoluted, or, or with the modulus around it rather, is greater than some amount eta, is equal to the probability that 1 over n is greater than eta, or e rather. Another way of writing this probability within, within the parenthesis here is that it's the same as the probability that n is less than 1 over e. But because we know that n is infinite, there's no way it can be less than an amount 1 over e, no matter how big that amount is. So we actually have that this is equal to 0 as well. Since we've demonstrated convergence and probability for each of the outcomes of our random variable, then that means that we can actually write that the probability that xn minus x is greater than eta is actually equal to zero, or another way of writing this is that xn tends in probability to x.